Hello and welcome to this, the second in our quest along not only England's but Europe's oldest road, the Ridgeway, snaking its way down the backbone of the chalk downs of southern England. Today we start just below there at this wonderful old mill at Kingston Winslow. And to travel the road used by knights of old, two modern knights join us on modern steeds, classic British motorbikes. First up, Andy Kershaw, globetrotting reporter and DJ extraordinaire. He's just met his heart's desire, a priceless bruff superior. Though owner Rodney Manners seems a bit reluctant to part with it, even for a day. This used to belong to my father, right. all right, and I'm going to leave it to my son, and I want to leave it to him one piece. <laughs> it's in good hands, right. don't worry. Oh, I trust it. Well, look, don't worry. <laughs> it's over to you now. <laughs> Thank you. When we get to the worst bit, we're going to... Sunday right, supplement that's fashion that's photographer that's and that's former that's professional that's motorbike that's racer, that's Julie Sleaford is our second ridge rider. Her fashion accessory, a 40-year-old Norton yeah, Big Four. Right. So, with some of the Japanese bikes, I found that... I was really like this. Yeah. I had a 350 yeah. and it was really long strip. <laughs> you feel really nice riding this. This is day two of our trek along the ancient ridgeway, which runs for 40 miles high up on the southern chalk downs. Its gateway in the east is the Thames. It then traces its course westward to the Vale of Pusey near Marlborough. Alan Kind, our guide and green road expert, has today's route. We're going to climb up onto the ridgeway by Wayland Smithy. Head southwest out of Oxfordshire into Wiltshire. And we're going to finish the day at Barbary Castle. Oh, right. Pretty good ride along the ridgeway. Mm. Quite difficult in places. So you're going to have to take a bit of care as we go along. Right. What Everybody do you mean? happy? Hang on. No. What do you mean difficult in places? Lessons over. Time for our bikes, old and new, to move off, and time for me to show them how it should be done. Uh, all right, I'll catch him. Don't you worry, I'll catch him. <laughs> People have made their homes in this area for well over 5,000 years, leaving us traces of some of the earliest settlements in Britain, back to iron, bronze and even stone ages. In those prehistoric times, their road the Ridgeway ran through a land of magic and mystery. Imagine 200 foot long stone tombs built a thousand years before the pyramids by long forgotten tribes. You'll find them on the Ridgeway and one of the best preserved Wayland Smithy is near today's starting point. 55 centuries ago men, women and children from the leading tribal family were buried here. Sadly as we discovered some of today's visitors treat it with less than the respect it deserves. How far you can go in at the moment? The chambers here. Yeah. I guess earlier you could go down right down into the depths of the chamber. Yeah, right this would be back. like the central uh, tunnel with more of these leading off. Yeah. I, I suppose. And uh, a corpse in each of them. Somebody's been chalking on the walls. Yeah, it's contemporary, I think. Contem yeah. It's not cave drawing. No, no, no. That's no, no. right. Lot, lot of Neolithic fag ends as well. Yes, yeah. It's rather cosy actually. When uh, when uh, I finally shuffle off, uh, I'd quite like it. A room of my own, like this. Well, yes, it gives you a bit of immortality. Yeah. People will be looking at you in five and a half thousand years. Fourteen corpses were found here with a room of their own, but this Stone Age long barrow was here long before the name Wayland. Later tribes called it that. Wayland was blacksmith to the Nordic gods and uh, Lord of the Elves as well. And legend has it that um, if a rider parked his horse here overnight at the smithy and left a coin on a standing stone, the following morning when he returned, he'd find that the coin was gone and the horse had been reshod. I just wish they did the same for brake linings. Five and a half thousand years on, our own time boasts wonders of a very different kind. One passes over regular as clockwork every morning. It's Concord. Supersonic speeds were a speciality of ridge rider Julie Sleaford as well. Falling off at speed was the reason she quit racing. I think it's a couple of years now, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Was that when you were racing? Yes, yeah. My last race, I think, excursion on a bike was Kyrgyzstan in uh, Ireland, Northern Ireland, yeah. Of course, getting off it was a bit more dangerous in those days, especially if you were doing the 100 miles on it. You had a few pranks, didn't you? Yeah, I have had a few sort of fast crashes as well. I was, you know, a bit notorious for it at one point. Probably safer walking. 
The Ridgeway is what's called a green road. Much of it's open to motor vehicles, but you're not welcome unless you follow a strict code of conduct concerning low speeds, riding in small groups, keeping off it when it's wet and the like. It means you don't damage what you've come to enjoy, and you don't annoy other users. Speaking of which, is that two nuns I see before me? I like being sort of rooted with the, with the feeling of this area being very, very ancient. I enjoy the feeling of being sort of rooted somehow in, in the past. There are all of the, most of these things up here are from sort of pagan times. Did they? Yeah. What do you think of that? You well, I mean, they had their understanding of, of life and, and God, I suppose. And it was before the time of Christ. And, I mean, that's, that's fine. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy the, the walk. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Extraordinary people you meet up here. The ancient track usually runs high and dry up on the chalk downs, but for some miles near the smithy, it drops into the valley and becomes the local country road. Within a few hundred yards, it crosses two more modern highways. First, Ermin Street, long and straight and built by the Romans when the Ridgeway was already 3,000 years old. Then there's the M4, Roman road of our time. But enough tarmac for the time being, Back on the high chalk, we have a date with the curator of the Downland Museum, Emily Leach, who's been digging at nearby Lowbury Temple. Lowbury is unusual because it's a place where there was a spring, and of course, as I'm sure you know, there's not much water up here on the Ridgeway. Um, and people came along and, and, and put what we call votive offerings down into the well or, or into... Um, where the spring was coming out of the ground. Sort of gift for the gods. And some Gifts for the gods, yes. Yeah. Some, right. some of these things are brooches. Um, and this is a little bit of uh, a bone pin that's been, uh, that's been, been carved. carved. Yeah. yeah, it's got, it's really rather lovely. This is a spearhead, a Roman spearhead, that was um, found up there at Lowbury. And again, I think it shows the continuity of people living over several hundred years. So Roman soldiers were there and then Saxon warriors came in. On. So what sort of people would the Romans be poking that into then? I mean, who would they I be I should think unruly Britons, about? really. Really? Unruly Britons, but uh, a lot of this stuff dates from about the second century AD, and the Romans have been here for a couple of hundred years already, so um, really things were fairly quiet. I guess you could uh, say this is the equivalent of a policeman's baton, perhaps, or <laughs> truncheon. What was interesting about Lowbury was that it was... Uh, an Iron Age temple site before the Romans were there and then after the Romans left when they all withdrew in 410 AD um, ah, 410. Saxons 410 AD <laughs> as I'm sure you yes a date familiar very familiar to you um, the Saxons came along and uh, I don't think the Saxons used it as a, um, a religious site but this uh, Strange looking object. <laughs> is, Saxon Blumonge mold. That's, well, that's one. <laughs> uh, um, is the centre of a shield. So it's oh. a shield boss. And uh, it rather implies that there were some soldiers up there. Well, um, why, is there is... A, why is there a road here? What, I mean, what, what was it connecting? It must have been uh, two important centres, was it? Well, at one end, of course, there's Avebury, which was a very important site. Um, many thousands of years ago. But I think the main reason there's one here is because it's as high up and it's an easy way to travel across the Downs. The Ridgeway follows a great band of chalk which runs from the Wash all the way through southern England and down to the Dorset coast. This escarpment marks a change between two types of farming. Hence the expression, so they say, as different as chalk and cheese. I'll explain why. Up here on the high chalk downlands, they used to keep sheep grazing. And down on the clay plains below, it was all dairy herds. Hence, chalk, cheese. See? Not quite so many signs of old-fashioned farms with their sheep and cattle these days, but a vast prairie of cereals, beautifully manicured by today's residents of the Ridgeway, now celebrated in song by Britain's foremost traditional band, the Albions. The farmer's the man who toes for us all. He walks on the Ridgeway, he walks on the Ridgeway, he's sturdy and tall, but with his toe on his arm, he is king of the land, brings food from the farm, with the strength of his hand, with his toe on his arm, he is king of the land, brings food from the farm. 
Separate here, the yep. what we discussed. Well, I want to go up. Uh, do you fancy coming up and have a look at um, Liddington yeah, Castle? Yeah, sure. Okay. And uh, you're gagging to ever give that a good go. And while well, Julie and I take the high road to one of King Arthur's castles, Alan and Andy are staying on the low road to find out if the bruff really is superior. Okay. See you later. See you later. With his pipe in his hand, nothing hours away from ten. Aha! Flint, weapons and tools for Stone Age men, and later on building materials. There's many villages along the ridgeway here whose walls have been built of flint. In fact, locals around Liddington are allowed by ancient right to dig for flint on Liddington Hill. They call it digging for pigs. The reason is they used to take their flint off the market and exchange it for that essential household item, the pig. And let me tell you, there's many a pig fattened up during the summer that come the winter has saved a family's bacon. At Liddington, the road isn't open to vehicles, so it's a long, hard climb up to the Ridgeway's highest point, 3,000-year-old Liddington Castle. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't want to be storming that with people lobbing stuff up the top. At nearly 1,000 feet above the valley, the local warlord must have been master of all he surveyed. Amazing view. It's all round this. Wiltshire. Oxfordshire, I suppose. Marks are off in this direction. It's going to look around. Look up here, Liddington Hill, the hill beloved of Richard Jeffries and Alfred Williams. These were the two guys in um, Victorian times who sort of pieced all of the Ridgeway together and said, Oh, this is an important race. Instead of being just bits of tracks, they suddenly realised that it all connected together. Oh, right. You know a little bit about Liddington Hill, don't you? Yeah, it's the highest point on the Ridgeway, and uh, so legend has it, it's where Arthur, King Arthur beat the Saxons at the Battle of Baden. Ah, that was a big one, wasn't it? Because they, they had a, sorted out some peace. Yeah, after. and there was 20 years' peace after that, so they say. Of course, it could be only so much. Uh, Legendary horse yes, in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but this bit down here, I mean, if you get over, they used to have these massive great wood ramparts on the top, and then you'd get over the outside one, and then you'd be down in this pit, and everyone's chucking yeah. stuff at I you. I mean, you can't believe poking. that anyone ever got up, really. No, no. I think I'd fancy being on the inside rather than the outside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the only, there's the only way to get into this place if you're going to attack. The area surrounding the Ridgeway is world famous for UFO sightings and for the mysterious corn circles which appear every year. Strange goings on that have become an obsession for local lad and leader of the Trogs pop group, singer Reg Presley. I don't want to disappoint him, but I can identify the object he's watching now. A 1936 Bruff Superior. The type of bike once beloved by Lawrence of Arabia and now it seems by Andy Kershaw. Tell you the truth, I was in two minds about whether to do this programme just with pressures of work and that, but when they phoned up one afternoon and said, we've got a rough superior, I said, count me in, because it's always been a fantasy of mine to ride one of these things, and uh, now I'm doing it, I've got to say, the reality lives up to the fantasy, it's absolutely gorgeous, I feel immediately at home on it, and it's the most comfortable bike I think I've ever ridden. Much into my bike, sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's crazy. No, I mean, I am into the sort of wheel shapes, though, the old circles. And, I mean, in 1991, with this thing here is a huge uh, formation right at the bottom of Barbary Castle. Uh, it appeared overnight. And um, 
a lot of, I mean, it, it, I met an a architect in there who said this would take me four hours to do on a draft board. Really? They're how, that how does it? They're that complicated. I mean, look at the little fella here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This, this one here, you know. So, so, who's, so who's doing them? <sighs> now, that's a million dollar question. Oh, if we, anyone knows, you should. We, we have actually got photographs of, of airborne phenomena. And uh, Stephen Alexander uh, filmed one one day with his wife. And it spiraled down, and he happened to see it out the corner of his eye, picked up his camera and started to, you know, roll with it. And this little object, about the size of a football, uh, light, uh, going round in the field, and it wasn't being affected by the wind or anything. And gradually, the thing moved up the field, over hedgerows, down behind a tractor, tractor driver stops, looks, sees it, carries on up the hill, and then goes up into the sky. Amazing stuff. Ridge's fortunes have skyrocketed recently as well. More money to finance his passion for corn circles. I've had a little bit of luck this year. Um, started in May, actually, and it's uh, a record, that I, uh, a song I wrote 27 years ago now. And Wet 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 have just covered it, and it's gone up the charts. It's been there 13 yeah. weeks at the moment. I shall be playing some of it back into, uh, into this phenomenon. Yeah. I want to know. I mean. If 75% if of these are hoaxes, I want to know who's doing the other 25. Oh, yeah. And if 99% are hoaxes, I want to know who's doing the one. I want to know him. Today's Ridgeway journey is a relatively domestic affair for Andy Kershaw. He's more likely to be found travelling the globe, searching out obscure pop music, or sending back graphic reports from the world's trouble spots. His next trip to Haiti will be his ninth. Meanwhile, back on the Ridgeway, we're in the rather less exotic valley of the River Og. The place where our merry band, after their separate adventures, joins up again. So what do you reckon on it then? This. I want one. one. Actually, Andy doesn't even own a car. Bikes are an all-weather passion. <laughs> it might be. I guess, I mean, it's not, uh, it's not to everyone's taste, riding through uh, Drizzle in, you know, the middle of London. And, in, in winter, when it gets really bloody cold as well, you can't feel your hands. How about, how's your enthusiasm today been for all the historical bits and pieces we're saying? Are you into history at all? Well, I am in the sense that uh, well, history was one of my subjects at school that I was quite good at, but I suppose, you know, it, it explains the travel to uh, uh, lots of, like, potty republics. Is that I like being in... You see, history is happening now, you know? Uh, well, for example, you know, what's been going on in Yugoslavia or Rwanda or Haiti or... Cuba or whatever. History's taking place right now. And I like being, a lot of this stuff when you say, why do you choose, how do you choose the places you go to, is I like being at the centre of world events. I like being at the centre of where history is being made. Yeah. 1,500 years ago, history was made here. This was one of the world's trouble spots. We're just below the ramparts of one of the mightiest forts on the Ridgeway, Barbary Castle. This was where the Saxons defeated the Romano-British, and as a result, the kingdom of the West Saxons, Wessex, was born. As luck would have it, we bumped into someone who knows the place almost better than the Saxons did, local historian Chris Chandler. This rich agricultural land was always a prime site. The Iron Age people used it, the Romans used it, the Saxons used it, and it always produced a good crop of arable. So who was fighting who up here? Well, in 556, we have the Britons, or the, the sub-Romans, who were living all along the edge here, and uh, the Saxons had penetrated up the Thames and were coming south. And I can see the sub-Romans actually using the ridgeway to place themselves in front of the Saxon army. And it so happened that the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle tells us it was just here that they met. Um, the Saxons had a resounding victory on that particular occasion. The Saxons were constantly scrapping with everyone, weren't they? Yes, it's... Um, Troublemakers, you, really. <laughs> you could say it was their nature, or, or some say it's the strong brew that they, they drank. But they certainly had an aggressive nature, and it took them a long way from the shores of Germany to conquer uh, a country like this. So you've got your Saxons down in the plain, they're belting up the hill, you've got the people looking after the fort as well. What do, what do they see when they get to the top here? Well, if they got to the top here, because they've got a, a, a sheer white uh, mound here, chalk, 
wet it down thoroughly so you're slipping and sliding all over the place you're faced with an enormous ditch which is probably three meters deeper than it is today you've got an inner rampart which again is two meters higher than we see it you have a, a two meter wooden uh, rampart just like the, the the cowboy forts in the wild west pictures and that in turn had a walkway along top of it so from 30 or 40 feet up there you've got people hurling javelins and stones this solves another mystery for me as well coming here because about 20 years ago i was stopped in the street by two american tourists who said to me can you tell me where we can find the ruins of barbara castle and she, was MP. <laughs> she, was, she was mp for blackburn <laughs> The interior of the castle, all 11 acres of it, was vandalised in a good cause 50 years ago. It was ploughed up to grow food during World War II, but traces of ancient man still clearly remain. There are little patches of nettles here and there which indicate where the roundhouses were. Uh -huh. And the nettles grow because of the increased nitrogen in the ground caused by rotting bones from the food and bits of leather and this sort of thing. So if you, if you look very carefully you can actually see where the more important huts were because of course the chief and the druid and the warlord would have had their huts in the lee of the rampart and be out of the wind all the time right. and when you get into the center you get the the smiths the iron workers and the the journalists the, the journalists <laughs> the, the, the lowest of the low they, they were living in the center and and, and uh, exposed to all winds and weather has it been properly excavated no never never why not um, it would cost an awful lot of money, and it's not in, thank goodness, any danger of exploitation at all. Uh, so it's just left here for the enjoyment of uh, everyone. Just next to the castle, Barbary Country Park is the place to camp if you want a tent with a view. Or you could rent something more substantial, an old shepherd's hut with a history perhaps. Yeah, listen, this little green hut yeah. behind you, here. Yeah. <laughs> I used that as a dressing room for the Carry On movies. Several of them, apparently. <laughs> Not many people know Sid that. James, <laughs> all in that. All, all, all in there at the same time. See Barbara and Windsor waggling all over All in Barbara and Windsor, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if all those thousands of years ago, our ancestors did what we're doing now, enjoying a bite to eat and marvelling at the views. Still, don't suppose they had a local calf to supply the cheeseburger. You can almost see the starting point. Yeah. All the way across the, the valley then. It's not actually that much distance. It's a good bit packed into it, isn't it? Mm. It doesn't look like it. looks like you can just jog over there. <laughs> yeah, okay then. Well, join us next week when we'll be... Yeah. <laughs> join us next week when we'll be moving along the, further along the Ridgeway to the land of mysticism in Airbury and Salt in Silbury Hill. Silbury Hill, Silbury Hill. What? Join us, it's what he said. <laughs> <laughs>